One thing that you find that we talk about a lot when we're doing some of the self-defense on this channel is we talk about the circumstances of what do you do if a weapon comes into play? How would the situation change? How would we adapt? But we never really kind of bring out the weapon. So going forward, we are gonna start doing a little bit more weapon videos, but before we even get to that, let's kind of just talk about the main topic at point here is what is the reality of a knife attack? Now, most knife situations that I've seen either both from my past instructors or that I see online is a lot of times people are teaching very specific techniques on how do we handle certain knife situations. So first and foremost, anytime you come into any sort of encounter where there is a knife in the play, your best bet is to just make distance as much as possible. There's no reason for you to engage in a knife fight unless it is absolutely 100% necessary. I understand too, a lot of people now bring into the argument of you know having a concealed carry, pulling the gun, that's really only gonna work, again, if you can keep the distance and maintain the distance. Because even in this situation, of if we're this close, by the time I were to pull the gun out, turn off the safety and get a shot off, I'm gonna be stabbed. So you have to, you know, guns come into play to an extent, but I still have to be able to maintain distance from this person. So again, if a knife is drawn into a situation, I wanna make sure I'm maintaining distance as much as possible. That's the first and foremost thing that any technique and any instructor should cover when it comes to knife fighting is maintain distance. Now, you can do that simply by just kind of creating space and working yourself around. I don't wanna find myself working backwards because now again, I'm gonna be on my heels and this person's drawing into me and my window of opportunity to extend out and work different angles and attack this person back is gonna get narrow and narrow by the minute. So if anything, I need to work the angles, cut the sides a little bit, if possible, I can try and throw a quick kick to kind of get away, but again, you still have to be worried about this person slashing at your leg as they're throwing the kick. So there's a lot of things to keep in mind in that sense. But again, the main point here is what is the reality of a real knife attack? Now, the distance is the first part. The second part is this. It is very hard to be able to teach a specific technique when it comes to a knife situation because you don't know how this person is gonna handle the knife. Again, you could be in a situation where we're in a clinch, weapon is not drawn yet, so maybe he has it tucked into his waistband or you know wherever it's hidden with him, and we could be in some sort of situation, and all of a sudden mid-situation, he pulls out the knife, and I may not see it until I'm stabbed. Or I see it at the last second, and now I have to try and control it, and we have to go from there. So it's, it's a very tricky situation if you don't even see that the knife is in play to begin with, and again, that's where we get a lot of questions on some of our previous techniques. But if the knife is drawn, if we see the knife visible, how do we handle that situation from there? Now again, Distance is gonna be your best friend, but what happens if you can't create that distance? What if you're forced up against the wall? What if you're, you know, your back's just up to something and you do not have the opportunity to create distance and you have to handle the knife firsthand? How do we do that situation? So again, in this circumstance, let's just kind of discover if your back's up against the wall. Again, distance is not an option. You cannot create a distance at this point. Eventually, this person is gonna to wanna to find some way to work himself off the wall to get back to the, you know, the open area where he does have the ability to create the distance if needed but he also has the opportunity to close the gap a little bit easier because even on the wall, it's very difficult for him to come off the wall and come at me if I'm coming into him. If we're out in the open like this, it's easier for him to get that momentum and push into me and close that gap compared to again with his back up against the wall. So techniques are very difficult to teach when it comes to knife situations because again, you don't know how the person's gonna be utilizing the knife. For instance, if we were to go over a specific technique, let's say I'm doing like an upper thrust here. One technique, we'll say if he's learning this one, maybe I come in and I push him up against the wall here and I start doing an upper strike like this. Okay, so he blocks my wrist, whatever he wants to do from there, go ahead, he's gonna, okay, he's gonna tie up, turn, throw him into the wall, throw some kicks, great, that works, it's great. He defended the knife, he deflected it, he worked off to the side. But again, is that how the reality of a knife situation is gonna be? Most likely not. One, you're not gonna have someone come in and stab you nice and slow. Two, it's not just gonna be a one hand strike and we're waiting for it to go. This may be the initial strike, and as they pull back, they're gonna come in and they're strike differently. So the reality of doing a strike like this compared to what an actual knife attack is gonna be, is I'm just gonna be stabbing you, slicing you, cutting you, and I'm not gonna give you any chance to react and do anything. So if you're trying to do a knife defense based off a specific technique, it's not gonna work in a, rea in a real street situation, so just take that out of your mind right away. It's easy when you know what the technique is. It's preemptive, you know what you're gonna do, you know how to deflect it, so if you're training in that sense and that's how you're practicing knife situations, again, when you get into a real situation where someone pulls a knife on you, your mind is gonna go back to those specific techniques, and he's gonna be more focused on trying to make sure that my body and everything lines up the way that he's learned the technique, rather than the overall goal is, how do we control the situation to begin with? That is what your focus needs to be when it comes to knife situations. Not is not how do I do this technique, how do I do that technique, but what is the overall goal? How am I able to control the situation? How do I control the attacking arm? How do I control the attacker themselves? How do I just control the situation to where I can successfully protect myself and get out of this? The other thing to keep in mind, you have to expect to get stabbed, you have to expect to get cut, but if you stop, you're dead. 
So you have to understand that even if you get attacked and you get cut and you get stabbed a little bit, you have to keep fighting. You don't just stop just because that happens. You have to keep pushing because when you do stop, that's it. I'm going to continue. I'm going to override and I'm just going to keep stabbing and cutting until the fight's over. Okay. So you need to understand in those situations that your focus is 100% on controlling the weapon, controlling the attacker, and then therefore you control the situation. So understand again, this may be my first strike, but now my second one is coming in with an over and now I may come down with the slash. You also have to kind of keep in mind on what the rest of my body is doing. I may not just sit out here like this. I may post on to you, so now it's harder for him to even come off the wall to defend himself. I may be pulling him in with a collar tie and stabbing him this way. I may be pushing his head up against this way and stabbing him from the side. I may come at him from the side and start stabbing him. So you don't really know how I'm coming at you, what I'm going to be using to you know post up against you. But again, if he focuses on the main goal, which is control on the attacking arm, yes, he may get stabbed once. And as I come in again, maybe he traps the arm this time. And now as I'm trying to fight this arm back, now he can start focusing on different circumstances because now he's focused on controlling the weapon. And once you control the weapon, then you can kind of start flowing into other techniques. So let's switch the rules a little bit and kind of just give you a little bit of idea of some of the situations that you can do. The second that you've been attacked, your goal now again is to just control that arm as much as possible. And again, there's no real clean cut way to do this. You have to find your best option of, can I grab the wrist? Do I grab the arm up here? Do I split my arms a little bit? Do I redirect the arm as it comes through? Do I simply just kind of deflect it and then grab on? It all kind of just depends on you. But again, if he comes at me straight on compared to an uppercut, it's all gonna be different. So your focus again is controlling this attacking arm as much as possible. So as he starts stabbing you and I'm controlling the arm, now it's a point of, okay, once I've got this control, how can I start controlling him? Because again, he also now realizes that I have the weapon at this point. So instead of him attacking me, he's now fighting over the weapon the same time that I'm fighting over the weapon. And now it's at a point where we're both trying to get control of this weapon and we're both for a little bit not necessarily focused on one another as we are focused on the weapon. So that's where you as a practitioner also have to kind of pay attention is I have to be able to control this weapon, but I also need to still make sure that I'm doing something to him to keep his focus away as much as possible. So if we're in this struggle, we're fighting for this weapon, maybe I start throwing knees as much as possible. I can throw a headbutt. I can slam him into the wall a little bit. If I can pass this arm through and slam him in again, okay, now I'm in a situation where I've got him pinned up against the wall. Now I can start working on some disarming techniques. You can look to break the arm if you need to, but you have options. But again, those techniques come once you're able to isolate and control the attacking weapon. You can't do that if you're trying to do specific techniques. Because again, if I'm sitting here, I don't know how the first strike is coming, especially if we're in a confrontation. Now again, for all you trolls that are gonna say this to begin with, I understand, yes, I should have created distance as much as possible. I should have never let this person get as close to me as they are right now. We made a lot of mistakes a while back, but here we are, we've got to the situation. Let's not worry about what mistakes you made to get into the situation. Now we just have to deal with it at hand. So again, I don't know how it's coming, but the second that that knife comes out now obviously yes if they go for a vital strike the chances you've been able to defend yourself is very slim but if they're going more for the torso area yes it could still be vital but i still am going to have an opportunity to try and defend it and just at least lock myself in and we can kind of go from there so we're not going to really go over too many specific situations in that sense we're kind of again just discussing what the reality of nice situations are at this point now with training in this sense again you have to find drills and ways to practice these types of situations because again, it's very hard to put yourself in these situations where you can train at this level and really understand how to deal with this. But again, there's really no perfect way to train for a knife situation because again, you really don't know how it's gonna come. And that, as we are discussing today, is what the reality is when it comes to knife fights. You don't know how it's gonna come. You don't know how the person's gonna hold a knife. They can hold it this way. They can hold it this way. They can be a slash or they can be a stab or they can be an uppercutter. You have no idea. But again, if you're focusing on the overall goal, it makes the situation a little bit easier for you to handle. And then again, as you start gaining more control of the overall situation, then the techniques can start flowing out from there. You can work your takedowns, your back takes, your two on one grips, the disarming, all that kind of stuff. But it all stems off of your ability to control the situation. So if you want to drill this one drill that I've seen and I've been fond of, and again, it goes based off the idea that you get stabbed, you can kind of do it in two variations. And again, we're still focused on this situation where you're up against the wall. One person starts here, they have their arm posted. Now again, you can do this one of two ways. This person is gonna close their eyes regardless, but it's just so that they're not anticipating it. First option is I'm holding the knife in some way, shape or form. He has no idea how, he has no idea how I'm holding the weapon, but all you're doing is you're waiting for your instructor to yell go. The second they yell go, he opens his eyes and I come in for whatever my first stab is and he just has to react. So now again, 
I may say go and I get the first stab and as my arm's coming back, that's when he's able to react and we go from there and now it's a matter of can you control the knife as I'm still trying to stab him. So that's one variation. The second variation of the drill is again, he closes his eyes, only this time he waits until he feels the impact of the first stab. Once he feels that impact, he's able to open his eyes and he reacts from there. So both of them put you in the situation of go and all of a sudden a knife is coming at you and hopefully you can stop it before you get stabbed. Or two, you get stabbed and now you're training on the reaction of after the fact and you go from there. Again, both are great to train in their own sense and they both put you in the reality of you're gonna get cut or potentially cut or you're gonna get stabbed or potentially stabbed. How do we react from there? And again, that's the main goal when it trains us. Rather than training specific techniques of, okay, I'm gonna do an uppercut, go ahead, pose, work your techniques from there. Because again, in a reality situation, as soon as he traps an arm, I'm fighting to get that knife back. I may start throwing punches. I may just pull this arm back. Your techniques aren't gonna teach you that. All right, there's too many variables that can come into play. So instead, focus on how do we just control the arm. We'll do a whole segment later on different kind of grips that I like to use, you know, Kimura locks, Americana locks, and Plata's, all the different situations and arm locks, you know, two on ones, Russian ties, everything that you can do to control the person's elbows and shoulders, which in turn controls the knife and the striking hand altogether. So that's just kind of a little bit of a variation, but again, we'll cover that stuff down the road. At the end of the day, when it comes to a knife situation, as much as possible, you want to create distance. If you can't create distance, close the gap right away and basically just get control of the attacking arm as quickly as you possibly can. Get control of the attacker following that, and then as a result, you'll get control of the overall situation. But if you're training knife situations with the mindset that you can do specific techniques, you are gonna find yourself in tough waters when it comes to a real knife attack situation because your mind is not trained to adapt in that way. So train this way, practice this way, run through some of these drills. I'm not saying that knife techniques aren't bad. I'm sure there's some great ones out there, but you have to be able to control the attacking arm and the knife first in order to be able to use these knife techniques to begin with. So give that a thought. If you have any suggestions for us or any input regarding this kind of reality of what knife attacks really are, drop them below in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Stay safe.